We've seen Xander, we've seen Fernando with the soccer ball over at Petco Park, but we see Manny with the, with the ball as well. Yeah, to bring him out of ball, so, uh, you know, we got to change that one up now. But, yeah, I mean, we, 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 we respect the game and, um, you know, not to be a part of it and, um, you know, see, the, see, the, see it grow even more. And, and here in our own city, um, you know, I think the city's uh, going to embrace it very well and we're looking forward to it. What does this mean for the legacy of Manny Machado here in San Diego? I mean, just continue to do what I, what I was promised, you know, just continue to grow as, 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 as a person, um, you know, get back to this community, make this community grow and make this, you know, one of the best cities in the world. So, uh, you know, we're going to continue to do that just one step at a time and we're going to continue. And then with the Right to Dream project obviously coming in, the academy process and, right. and that, uh, what is Saquon's uh, role going to be, whether it be land for some sort of academy setting there or what are those talks at, at this moment um, so an academy is going to be vital to right to dreams uh, operation and, and the club's operation and so we look forward to announcing in the future some very exciting plans for that and again the tribe will still continue to be involved uh, but I could tell you when I first saw the right to dream video and they were talking about what they had done in a village in Ghana it, it struck not just me but other members of the tribe because we can remember when our reservation looked like that village in Ghana and I'm being 100% serious. And so to, to be able to evolve over 40 years, and it was just heartfelt. And their mission and their vision completely aligns with our vision. What type of different branding or style of soccer does San Diego bring that was appealing uh, aside from all the other? Well, I think that's probably a better conversation with Tom Penn or others that are going to be involved in that. They're going to, you know, they've done, a, Tom did a really good job in helping to brand LAFC. I think they're really smart, they're creative. Uh, the Mansoor family, I mean, it's a very, as you heard Muhammad's speech, I mean, it's a very, very successful family and business. I think they're going to bring that level of expertise and appeasing global uh, connections to this club. I mean, we want San Diego to be a global brand. And with an Apple being able to broadcast every single game around the world, and with a global successful business entrepreneur, this is an opportunity for the city uh, to not be in the shadow of other cities in California, to perhaps be one of the bright shining lights for what uh, soccer and sports can be. And what would you say to those fans of soccer, of the sport that have been here, that maybe feel a little bit disenfranchised with the exclusion of Loyal, with them not being involved? You know, listen, we, we just launched the team today. So let's wait to see how all that develops. And, you know, listen, we're all in this together to try to build a soccer nation in our country. And, you know, we should be focused on what we can do together. And let, we'll worry about challenges we have when we have them. We don't have them yet. You know, the team was just launched. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you very you. much. Mo Salah to San Diego? <laughs> Would be a good choice. Good choice? <laughs> Sounds good. When, when, uh, when some of the people of Right to Dream went to Egypt, when we decided, uh, when we both Right to Dream in 2019, and if there was a right to dream in sub-Saharan Africa and there was a right to dream in Denmark, they said there has to be a right to dream in Egypt. And when they went and looked, they said, Mohammed, we see a we see a hundred Muslims. So we already have kids and right to dream. One is called Maradona and the other one is called Messi. And they're age 10 and 12, and they will be great players. So we have, you know, uh, and when we when we did the first uh, uh, what was it, scouting? Uh, People, yeah, Scott. Yeah, you know, uh, tryouts. You know how many came out? Take a guess. Thousand. Sixty-five thousand. But we did it around the communities, and we have today two classes. The first classes, I think, here it's going to be the same. We'll have we'll have amazing players coming out from this area and from the surrounding. If you ever need a goalkeeper, I'm here. Bringing in everything in the community that soccer already has here, how does the MLS club now look to bridge those uh, opportunities of other supporter groups? You mentioned the Loyal, you mentioned 1904 and Wave. What are those listening sessions going to be like and what is the MLS club listening for? Well, we've already started listening to the supporter leaders. I wanted to mention them today because so often the supporters give as much, if not more, than the organization itself. And I lived that up in Los Angeles. And what we have is the opportunity to bring those different groups together and create something new. They create it. We don't. They do. They'll name themselves. They'll come up with their own traditions. And we're just here to empower it and be a part of it. And it's actually the fun part for me because I like to see what happens. And what, but we have a big north end here with safe standing and all the infrastructures in place. 
but now the community has to be built. The, the physical place is built, but now we have to do the work of listening to everybody. What do they really want? What do they really value? How do we represent them and bring them all together? LAFC versus San Diego, who are you choosing? LAFC versus San Diego? Hey, we're in San Diego, let's go.